Hey guys, Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today in this video we're going to be looking at the penultimate of the S4 season heroes. It is Immortal Guardian, he's the second of the three archer heroes in the S4 group. Let's get straight into him. As you can see I do have Immortal Guardian in my account and I've so far unlocked uh, I've unlocked one of his uh, skills. I got one dupe look for him so I've got his sixth skill unlocked. Just working on those fragments to uh, pick up another dupe clip for him. Let's have a look at what he can do, guys. Uh, first off, of course, Dictator skill, 23,100 extra marching capacity in the hero squad with the troops. His first hero-specific skill, no return. It's a status skill. Remember, guys, status skills are, one of the, uh, are probably the most rare skills in the game, and they are probably the best skills to have because they are going to be effective throughout the battle uh, so the effective range is zero because it is um, taking effect on his friendly squad and what will this do it will uh, reduce the damage taken by 30 percent uh, it starts at 12 percent and then you scale it up at level 10 to 30 percent absolutely huge um, immortal guardian is a defensive hero as it says here this hero excels at taking punishment suitable for front row squads definitely on this occasion i 100 percent agree with what the Developers have written in that description. Immortal Guardian is perfect for that front row. And uh, this skill is going to just reduce the amount of uh, troops that you're losing on that front row, which is absolutely key to a battle. Third and fourth skills. Defensive formation, so will increase uh, resistance from 5 to 50%. And offensive formation on the fourth skill, again, increases the might in the uh, for the archers in that hero squad from 5 to 50%. Immortal Guardian's second hero specific skill, skill 5, Desert's Wrath. It's a prep skill. Effective range is 5, but don't make that don't let that fool you. Still absolutely definitely put him on in the front row. And this will target two random enemy squads within effective range. And then again, it's basic, well, it's basically guaranteed unless um, unless he is silenced or suppressed. Uh, in battle, when two random enemy squads within range cast combat skills or basic attack, then they will deal minus 5% damage to them. So this, this is a debuff skill. It's, um, it's reducing the uh, effects of the opponent's squads and it will, hit two, it will target two of the enemy squads. Uh, this effect stacks a maximum of eight times. So it will... It will be effective in. It should be effective in every turn of the battle, similar to his second skill. And as it stacks, that means it will uh, in the the effect will increase each turn. So from five percent up to forty percent less damage uh, being dealt by these two enemy squads. So this is a really interesting skill. It's weakening your opponent the deeper into the battle that you go. Uh, so you, it's absolutely brilliant that he's got two of those skills. His sixth skill, Awaken. As usual, you're getting the extra 250% bonus to the leadership skills. He's also giving 15% extra might and resistance to the troops in his squad. And then you're also getting, this is key as well, an extra 15% HP for those troops. So more HP, that means they can take more damage, that means they're going to survive longer. When you combine that with his skill 2, where it's helping them take less damage, then this is he is a really excellent support hero defensive hero on that front row seventh skill discipline it'll impact on all the troops all three squads in your legion and this is a might buff so it's going to give between 13 percent and 40 percent extra buff and then finally his eighth skill immortal warrior again it's another prep skill so all of three of his skills are uh, non-combat skills he's a full-on support hero this has an effective range of two and it will target all three random friendly squads within effective range. So this is going to again buff. Uh, well, this is a heal. This is a buff and a healing skill. So effective range two because it's uh, going to take impact on your own squad and then the middle row and back row of your own formation. So for the first three turns, all friendly units take uh, between. Minus 11% and 20% damage. So again, it's it's a, it's reducing the amount of damage that all troops in your whole formation will take. 
And on top of that, you've got a 50% chance to recover units when taking damage, between 18% recovery rate and 45% recovery rate when you max this skill. So absolutely brilliant. Again, it's buffing, it's buffing the troops in your legion, and you've got a healing element where you can get 45% back in each of the first three turns for all squads. And it's 50% chance, so that's not a bad chance. Uh, on bearing in mind, you know, that's on top of the other part of the skill, which is basically um, guaranteed unless he gets suppressed. So three really, really good skills. Um, you know, they're not chance-based. The only way someone's going to interrupt uh, skills five and skills eight are if they have uh, a counter measure in their legions. Um, they're both also pre-battle skills being activated, so Desert Storm will not be able to interrupt them. So Immortal Guardian, he is a really, really meta hero. Um, you know, as I keep talking about in these videos, if you've got a hero where the skills are guaranteed, it makes such a massive difference. And Immortal Guardian has nearly every key ingredient to be a brilliant front row defensive hero. Um, let's go and have a look at him in action. So again, during Heroes Duel this week, a couple of people had him in action, and we're going to pick him up here. So in this battle, we had um, a Mortal Guardian on the front row where he should be with a combination of uh, the Tarantula and Jade Eagle. Um, a very good, a very good combination to have him in. Probably the third best combination. Uh, so let's see in this battle what he does. So this did last for eight turns, this battle. And immediately, on the first turn, he's activated all three of his skills because he had that status skill that's guaranteed. And then you're getting the others. So where you see the green plus 1545, that is the recovery skill um, for the troops that have been attacked. And what you've got to remember is this front row, it's taking minus 30% damage for the whole battle. And there you go. The second row, when it got attacked, also got buffed. And it's every time, every time they take damage, there's a chance to get some of the, you know, fifth, fifth, what was it, 45% um, healed. And that's why it's really difficult to break down an archer's uh, legion that has a mortal guardian in it because he's healing and also Tara actually has a healing element as well in her skills um, and he's protecting those troops and also don't forget he's got this his fifth skill is actually all the time it's making the opponents uh, weaker and weaker as you get through the battle so even though in the first half of the battle you, th you think, oh, they're taking a lot of damage compared to, um, you know, the front row of their opponent, or it's a similar amount. You've had they've had that protection, and then as you get into, see there, still it's he's still healing, still healing all the time, and then as you get into the second half of the battle, um, his skills are helping to weaken your opponent, and when you pair him with some like two heroes who are. Um, very offensive, whether that's Tara and Jade Eagle or Tara and Spectral Reaper or even Jade Eagle and Spectral Reaper, uh, then they're, towards the end of the battle, their skills are going to do a tremendous amount of damage, particularly in the in the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th rounds. So we're just going to speed this up a little bit now. And you can see already that this front row of cavalry their health is depleted and it's getting their damage is increasing. Those two rows then got hit by a, a Jade Eagle attack, as you might have seen in my previous season hero guide video. You know, 23,000 damage, um, and part of that being so big is because of this debuff effect. So we're going to see another Jade Eagle. And as you can see, this cavalry towards the end of the battle, they're just. They're just getting hammered. And you've still got your three rows on the archer's side. 
So we're into the last turn now. And this is, well, Jade Eagles just activated all three of his skills. I'm sure this is going to finish him off. Yeah, there you go. And so that, you, you know, there can be no clearer indication there. Well, the opponent didn't have the best setup, if I'm honest. But the kind of key thing I'm trying to highlight there was that um, at the end of the battle, the opponent had none of their squads left. But you still have all three of your squads. And a big part of that is the skills that Immortal Guardian has activated. So when you look at a battle report, it'll only it'll only ever say that he's used three skills because it's his three skills are getting activated at the start of the battle before turn one every time. Um, and he won't have any kills because he's a full-on support hero. But what he will do is he's going to buff your opponents. And look at that, Jade Eagle, 175,000 kills. Um, so when if you pair him with two killer heroes, um, he's going to almost provide enough def defense, particularly for that front row, all by himself. And he's going to help your killers um, do the damage as well. So that is absolutely perfect combination for a support hero. Uh, let's go back into him into his main menu so with Immortal Guardian in terms of um, in which order would you want to unlock his skills well he is a front row hero so absolutely you must do what I've done here which is unlock his SIP skill first so that you can maximize the troop number because you want to have as many troops in your front row as possible uh, to prevent it collapsing and, and losing that hero uh, then as normal you would then unlock his eighth skill uh, which will give you, obviously, this great benefit uh, on the first three turns um, for all of your all of the squads in your Legion. And then you would unlock the seventh skill last. Where is he in terms of ranking? Um, for me, I think he's, what, the third hero where I'm going to say he's absolutely key for you in the game. He, he If you've got a Mortal Guardian in your Archer's formation, um, he's pretty much the best front row archers hero that you can get in the game um similar you know in level of importance to the immortal back row cav hero and desert storm s4 footman hero uh this is the first archers hero that you're going to hear me say yes you absolutely definitely want to get in so for those of you that are coming uh saving your ticket you're in s3 uh halfway s through s3 save your super tickets for um, the S4 recruitment event at Seasonal Recruitment. You really, really want to be going for both Desert Storm and Immortal Guardian. They're absolutely both key heroes in the game, uh, bar none. So I'm really happy that I've got him in um, in my account, in my main account. Uh, in terms of combinations of heroes that he's going to work with, um, so as I just as you just saw there, that is kind of the with him working with Tara, the Tarantula, and um, Jade Eagle, that's kind of the third level. Um, I would say that um, slightly better than that, the second um, best would be him with Tara and Spectral Reaper. Spectral Reaper is an SX3 Archer's Hero. Uh, I would say he is the meta back row Archer's Hero. And then instead of, um, and then really currently the best formation combination for Immortal Guardian would be Immortal Guardian front row, the Defender, uh, the second SX3 Archer's Hero on the middle row, and then um, Spectral Reaper on the back row. You can swap a Mortal Guardian and um, the Defender around between middle and front rows, depending on whether you're going for a defensive element or um, or offensive. Um, but those are kind of the really good combinations for him uh, once you've got access to those SX heroes. Um, other than that, you could put him at the front uh, with Jade Eagle and Spectral Reaper so you just have two pure killers in your squad and hope that uh, Mortal Guardian does enough supporting uh, to keep those troops alive. He will also work earlier in the game, um, say, well, say if you don't have a Jade Eagle or a Tarantula or a Defender, you could use him on the front row even with Skybreaker middle row and then uh, Spectral Reaper on the back. And then uh, you could actually use him uh, in terms of the meta formation for those of you guys in S4. You could have a, a Mortal Guardian on the front, Skybreaker on the middle, and then Jade Eagle on the back. That's going to be the best combination for you guys in Season 4. So that is Immortal Guardian, guys. An absolutely key hero that you're going to want to get in the game. Um, 
when you see him on that uh, seasonal recruitment banner in S4, you definitely, definitely want to go for him. Um, start of season four, start collecting fragments for him. He, you, he's definitely worthwhile. Okay. If, of course, um, you have any comments about what I've covered in this video today, please pop them in the comments section below. Uh, if you think that um, you know, if you've got a mortal guardian and um, you've had a different experience to what I've described, then of course I'd love to hear from you. And uh, for those of you that haven't already, please do click that subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, and of course, uh, I'd love a few likes on this video as well. Uh, if if you could share my channel in your alliance chats, province chats, and on guilds chats, that would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you just uh, share a link to the channel through your WhatsApp, Discord, or line groups that you use to communicate uh, in the game, that would be greatly appreciated as well, guys. Uh, that's everything for this video. We just have one more S4 hero to go. Uh, that is going to be Divine Arrow, the third of the S4 Archer's heroes. So I'll be reviewing him in the coming days. And then we are finally going to be onto those SX hero guys. So I'm looking forward to uh, doing the videos on those for you. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you soon.